So while it's kind of inferred that we may have another Call of Duty World War II event coming up here as of Tuesday, it's not something that's really ever been confirmed outside of this, and it's probably gonna be something that just drops out of nowhere like what we've seen with the last two of three events with the Days of Summer and as well Attack of the Undead. Very likely that it's going to just drop on Tuesday if it drops Tuesday at all, but if not, well, it'd probably be pushed back a little bit later, maybe a week or two later, depending on what scheduling conflicts may arise via the Blackout beta. But with all things considered that we've talked about previously, it seems like Tuesday is more than likely going to be that day, and while we don't have anything confirmed to us, we may actually have a solid amount of information about what that event might be and some of the things that it may be bringing to Call of Duty World War II. So in that sense, I want to talk to you guys today about some leaks that potentially may have come out regarding Call of Duty World War II's upcoming event and what very well may be called Covert Storm. So that said, we're going to be talking about that here at this, but of course, as with all leaks, take it with a grain of salt. Nothing is confirmed until it's official, and as of right now, it certainly is not official. However, a little disclaimer to kind of put this on here to maybe even put some more validity to it. This comes from the Twitter and YouTube users, the Woo Lads, who have been very instrumental in a lot of the leaks as of recent times. We talked about a lot of the stuff they leaked with Blackout recently. They've leaked a ton of stuff with World War II in particular, and so this just has a very good track record following them, so it is quite possible that we see some of this, if not all of it, come as of this Tuesday. So if you guys want to check them out, leave the link down there in the description below to their Twitter if you guys want to go shoot them a follow. But that said, talking about what they detailed here for us, it starts initially with the first tweet of a thread saying, just a heads up, this next World War II event absolutely breaks from the norm. If you thought the Master Prestige camos were whack, just wait until you see some of these variants. Covert Storm, named subject to change, should be launching this Tuesday, September 4th. And you World War II Zombies fellers are probably going to get those consumables that were detailed in the leaked blog post from Activision. And the final tweet saying, forgot to put out this last bit, the Waffenschmiede 2 is the community challenge weapon, helmets, calling cards, etc. are pretty on par for the course. However, from what we've heard, a variant slash weapon crafting system was in the works with a very good chance of this. So that is a lot to digest here, of course, just all up front and reel out in the open with it. And like we talked about in a recent video talking about when the next event might be, this actually would be a great way to kind of cap off year one support ending with a bang per se. So that said, let's break down a little bit of what was mentioned at first. The first thing that was mentioned was that of camos, and I'm totally cool with where this may go directionally. You guys may have differing opinions, but that's totally cool, and I totally respect your vision that you may have on these, but they ended up saying if you thought the Master Prestige camos were whack, just wait until you see some of these variants with a biohazard as well as a nuclear emoji attached to it. So what this could end up meaning, of course, could be pertaining just to camos, or maybe some of the variants even that we end up getting as a result of new content added in. We know, of course, that we have those two brand new weapons, the Proto X1 as well as the VMG 1927, plus we'll have new variants for the AS44, but the AS44 didn't really seem to have anything out of the ordinary for variants, and as for what we end up seeing with the Proto X1 and also the VMG, we don't have any real information on those just yet in terms of variants. So it very well may just be camos alike, but the way that I'm interpreting this is that we're gonna see a lot of cool things, very very similar to Master Prestige moving camos, there were some things that way before the game launched, there were some camos that we've yet to see that had some animation with them, and maybe we end up seeing those finally here with this, but some of the camos are definitely not going to be those standard just base colors like we've seen previously, and to me, I'm totally cool with that. Playing the game with trying to please those that adhere to the historical accuracy for a year, it's kind of made the camos bland in my opinion, and as somebody that just enjoys that kind of stuff, I'm all for having at the end of the life cycle when it's a not necessarily a big problem with it. I'm cool with that now going off and branching out to some cooler and extracurricular ideas. So expect those in some collections, maybe expect those of course in Operation Overlord as well. I just hope that there's a decent amount of them that I have a chance out of my supply drops because it feels like any time that there are some cool camos that drop, I just never have any good luck and don't get them on anything that I use. If anything, I'll end up getting one of the new camos on like a pistol or a launcher or something like that. I even had a few that were melees and I don't use really any of those. So unfortunately that's just the way the cookie crumbles in my case. But regardless, moving on, the next thing that was mentioned was that the zombies fellers will have the consumables that were detailed in the leaked blog post. Now this kind of may test your memory a little bit here in recent times because this came out a couple of weeks back was only up for a very short period of time. I believe like 
30 minutes to a half hour it was live. But without delving too much into that information just for the sake of trying to avoid any issues here up on the channel, that stuff would end up giving a few things that would help, say, your armor, some special weapons, and also guarantee some weapons as well out of the mystery box. So in that sense, those may be the ones that are coming as well, and it'd probably be the best time to see this because we didn't see them within DLC 4, and with it being something associated with the new zombies chapter, The Frozen Dawn, where else would it end up coming in? The next thing that is supposedly confirmed here out of this, though, is one of my personal favorites I've been looking forward to seeing when this would come in, is the Waffenschmiede 2 WAF 28 variant. Now, personally, I don't really use the WAF 28 all that much, but ever since we saw this back around, say, January and February, whenever there was an exploit to see all variants in the game, this has been one of my favorite weapons. Along with the Iron Curtain 2 and a few others, this one is definitely one that I think I'm gonna try and get my hands on. And of course, with it being something that is no longer the idea of just having it come as a weapon contract like the Iron Curtain 2 was, and as well both revolvers as of recent times, as a flash contract available for 24 hours only, it's gonna be nice to see that this is now a community challenge reward. So pretty much as long as you take part in World War II, you'll have the opportunity to end up getting this. But of course, as with all community challenges, you want to log in as early as possible so you can get credited for being a part of the community at the very beginning and then therefore getting all the rewards as a result of that community challenge. So that's something that we finally now get an explanation for this. This was added into the game as of a couple of days to maybe a week or two ago now at this point. It added it in as well as some of the other things that we now see live with DLC4 and all that. But the final thing that really gets me interested is that the last portion of what was mentioned is a variant and weapon crafting system that was in the works and that very well may be coming with this update. Now to me this is kind of vague and very interesting because it is a massive overhaul to something that would be able to allow us to get variants or to be able to craft our own in a sense maybe even, but it's being added in at the very tail end of World War II. So, it's kind of weird to me the timing of this and therefore maybe the validity of this actually coming in full, but there might be some reasoning and explanation here for it as well. One solid point that my good friend Prestigious Key actually made in his video detailing this was the idea that this isn't the first time we've seen something like this proposed. Granted, it was not added in, so if this is added into World War II, it'll be the first time we see it actually enacted, but Advanced Warfare was supposed to have a very similar system in place added very late on after the launch and almost into what is Black Ops 3 now. So at that point, the idea behind that was you'd be able to burn your armory items for armory credits. And this was due directly in part because there were players at that point that had already gotten to Grandmaster Prestige, or 30 Prestige's max level at that point. So if you were to that point, obviously the main basis of burning items from your armory was to get XP. You'd end up getting more as the rarity increases, obviously, but something that was then a relevant problem towards the end of the life cycle of Advanced Warfare was that players were max level and then burning things for no real reward after that. So this proposed armory credit system would allow you to burn them not for XP if you were max level, but for armory credits themselves. So therefore you'd be able to buy different items, different supply drops, whatever it may be within Advanced Warfare. This might be very similar to that same scenario, but kind of now in a different sense because we one, don't have any armory to end up burning specific items as is, so therefore that kind of nullifies the idea of a direct comparison anyway. But also this might not be exactly just for max level players, this might be for all players in particular, which would be honestly really awesome to end up, once again, either crafting your own self-made variants for weapons or crafting something that, say, you didn't get the PPSH Iron Curtain 2 contract, but you could end up using armory credits to buy up to that and end up getting that just via your in-game currency organically. So that's something that may actually happen and, of course, is very enticing to me. I'm very excited to see where this now goes in terms of if this even comes out and also where it'll lead in the coming weeks to months. And again, the big question is still why would this be at the very tail end and maybe it's honestly just to keep some content fresh for whenever players that aren't interested in Black Ops 4 go into a second year of playing World War II. I know that might sound crazy to some people, but of course, if you've been around the channel, you probably see it in the comments as well, where there are people that aren't really interested in Black Ops 4. You may have differing opinions, and again, that's totally cool, but regardless of if you're excited for Black Ops 4 or you're very much so interested in continuing playing World War II for another year, Sledgehammer's still going to be supporting it in some capacity as long as there's players on it. But that said, I think that's where 
we're gonna wrap it up. It kind of details everything that the Wu lads gave to us here as well. There be some other things that you guys can check out in the description for you guys as well that as of recording this actually did come up. So it's a little more to add some validity to this, but I can't actually share that stuff in video. So of course you guys are more than welcome to check that out on your own. But that said, that's what we're gonna wrap it up. So let me get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. Are you guys looking forward to what may be the final event within year one of World War II? Are you guys excited for some new crazy and maybe zany camos, some new potential overall features like a crafting system for weapon variants, whatever it is that you're interested in or maybe not so interested in. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But that said, that's where we're going to wrap it up. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel, want to stay up to date with all things Call of Duty World War II, Black Ops 4, and anything in particular relating to Call of Duty, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you do not miss a single thing. We do daily content here. So if you're new and want to stick around for all that kind of stuff, of course, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And also, if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube. Practice and live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. And also, if you guys want to follow me over on Instagram, a little more active over there, so that link is as well in the description for you guys to check out, but totally up to you. That said, thank you guys all so much for watching. I will see you guys later. Take care and peace.